Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to my mini series on Big O Notation. In this mini series, you'll learn everything that you need to know about Big O Notation and how you can use it to improve your ability to create efficient algorithms. I'll use whiteboard illustrations to help you visualize and understand concepts, followed by coding tutorials that you can follow along with to further solidify your grasp of the concepts. In this first video, we'll answer the question, what is Big O Notation and why is it useful? Throughout this series, if you find that you like any of the videos, please take the time to gently tap that like button. And without further ado, let's get started. So what is Big O Notation? Big O Notation is used to analyze the efficiency of an algorithm as its input approaches infinity, which means that as the size of the input to the algorithm grows, how drastically do the space or time requirements grow with it? For example, let's say that we have a dentist and she takes 30 minutes to treat one patient. As her line of patients increases, the time that it takes for her to treat all of the patients will scale linearly with the number of patients waiting in line. This is because it always takes her a constant amount of time to treat each individual patient, which is 30 minutes. This gives us a general understanding of how long our dentist would take to treat 10 patients, 20 patients, or even 100,000 patients. This is because since we know that the dentist takes a constant amount of time, which is 30 minutes, to treat each patient, we can always calculate the time it would take for her to treat any number of patients by multiplying the number of patients times 30 minutes. With this in mind, we can categorize her efficiency as being linear, or as we would say in big O terms, big O of n, where n is equal to the number of patients. The time that it takes for her to finish her work scales linearly or proportionally with the number of patients. We use this same technique to determine the efficiency of algorithms. We can get a general idea of how a function's time efficiency scales by categorizing a given function's efficiency the same way that we categorize the dentist's efficiency. Let's create an easily comprehensible function that scales similarly to the dentist's. So this function is in the same linear category as our dentist. Let's step through it and find out why. To start, the input to our function is an array with seven items inside of it. For each of those items, we will log this expression which multiplies 1000 times 100,000. Now don't let these large numbers fool you. It will always take the same amount of time to multiply 1000 times 100,000, therefore this line of code takes constant time. Which brings me to a very important point. When considering the efficiency of a function, these lines that take constant time do not matter. Well at least for our purposes they don't. This is because, if our array were some crazy length like 200 million, changing this expression to something simpler like 1 plus 1 would have a negligible effect on the efficiency of the function as a whole. We'd still need to iterate through 200 million items in an array. In fact, even if the function looked like this, we would still ignore all of these constants and say that this function scales linearly or is big O of n. Similarly, if we think back to our dentist example, we see that she took 30 minutes per patient. But even if she took 3 hours per patient, the amount of time it takes her to see all of her patients will still scale linearly. This can be difficult to grasp at first, but it starts to make sense over time. So in the last slide, there was a lot of talk about ignoring the constants, but what exactly is a constant? A constant is any step that doesn't scale with the input to the function. For example, the time to evaluate this expression does not change with the input because both 100 and 1000 are constants. 
That is, these values are always the same. This expression always results in the same value, and it always takes the same amount of time, or constant time, to return the same result. Just like we use big O of n to describe linear functions, we also have a big O name for constant algorithms, which is big O of 1. A good way to think about it is, every line of code is actually a function in and of itself, which is actually true. For example, let's reintroduce this function. So this line of code is the reason why the entire linear func function is O of n, because as you can see, as the size of n increases, the number of iterations that the for loop must traverse increases as well. But let's take this second line into consideration. Let's for one second pretend that we have a function that contains only this line. Now as you can see with this function, we pass in an array, but the function does nothing with the array. The only operation within the function is constant because it doesn't scale with any input. So regardless of how large of an array is passed to this function, this line always produces the same result, and this is the only line in the function, so therefore this entire function is O of 1. But wait, in this function we have multiple lines that are O of 1, yet we still prioritize the line that is O of n and ignore the O of 1 operations. Why is this? Well this brings us to our last important note. In big O we have a growth hierarchy which looks something like this. Now don't panic. You don't need to understand all of these just yet. So let's only pay attention to the ones relevant to this video, O of n and O of 1. We'll learn about the other ones in following videos for this series. This chart shows the efficiency categories in order from good to bad. That is to say that this first case, O of 1, is the best case and this last one is the worst case. In big O notation, when determining the efficiency of an algorithm, we only care about the worst case. So that means that the worst case, or the highest order operation, trumps the operations that have better performance. So if we add the performance of all of these lines up like so, all of the lines of code that are O of 1 get cancelled out because O of n is the worst performing or highest order part of the function. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we ignore constants. Because we are actually just eliminating the non-dominant items, because as a function's input moves towards infinity, constants become less and less significant. So to recap, when evaluating an algorithm's efficiency, we must take into consideration the efficiency of each step within the algorithm. We then find the highest order step, or the step that has the worst performance, and prioritize it over all of the better performing steps. Steps that are constant, or that are O of 1, are as good as it gets in terms of efficiency. So we always ignore them, unless the entirety of the function is constant, or O of 1. And in that case, we would categorize the entire function as constant, or O of 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your answer to what is big O notation. If you found this video helpful, please take the time to like and subscribe. I make videos like this every week. I'll see you in the next one.